about him, Hewish was his name. He was an old master sergeant, and I guess you'd call him an alcoholic because he'd drink up all his money at the club. He'd drink up at else's money that would pay for his drinks, and then he'd stay until the club closed. And up until this time, uh, backing up a little bit, when we went first originally went overseas, we had white mosquito nets. Uh, O.D. hadn't come into the situation by then. So there were lots of white mosquito nets clear up to this time. Well, this Hewish, like I say, he'd stay there and drink until the club closed up. And, well, the latrines were kind of out of the way. He didn't have time anyhow, so if it looked like an open window, that's what he'd use. And a lot of times, he must took these white mosquito nets as an open window, and you can guess what happened. Uh, nobody wanted to stay in the same barracks with him. That, that's as close as I'll tell the story. You can imagine what the rest was. So it sounds like there was a range of different types of every kind of personality. Yes, there was a mel that was a real melting pot. We had all kinds of people. Kinds and from all different walks of life too, and it, it's amazing how we all blended in together. Well, I imagine you really did. I mean, you had probably people who were um, some people who were college kids, some people who were farmers, some who were wealthy, some who were poor. Probably, I mean, imagine they were picked up from all across America. That they were. <clears throat> we had. Uh, it seemed like uh, the farm boys did quite well, and I ran into a, f a fellow that lived next to our daughter years later. I never thought of it this way, and he was a Marine. He was an enlisted Marine, and he wound up uh, retiring as a colonel. And he said the best Marines came from the farm boys. He said they knew which side the tree the moss grew on. He said they'd hunted rabbits when they were kids. He says they knew how to sneak up a hill. He said they fired their guns. They had lots of practice before they came in there. He says some of the best soldiers on earth came from the old outlying uh, farm boys. We had guys flying B-24s that didn't even know how to drive a car because they came, the, came out of the cities. But it, uh, looking at it that way, it was quite a mix. We had rich kids that had never had to uh, stand up and do this. We had uh, a lot of the poor kids. They took care of themselves seemingly better than the rich kids that came out of the cities. But we all blended together eventually and for somehow we won the war with what we had. Well, I noticed a great fondness among the CBI veterans for getting together and, and I think in a way that's different from other veteran groups. You know, there's just a, a real sense of, of group. And what, what, what caused the CBI to be different that would create, that environment would create you, a CBI veteran, six years later, who's still involved? Well, there was some kind of a bonding, like I just got through saying. You take this mixture of people that uh, were put together. We had to survive together. And after the war was over, we all went our different directions, uh, getting an education, uh, uh, finding out what our uh, life was going to be, what kind of work we're going to do. We separated for a long period of time, and then this uh, organization, the China Burma India Veterans Group, started with three fellows from Wisconsin originally, and that started overseas in about 1945 uh, or 46. These fellows said, "Hey, since we've uh, been." together like this, we really should start an organization. 
And what it started out to be originally was the Wisconsin Club. And pretty soon they held a meeting, meeting or two, and the next thing you know there were people showed up from 13 different states. And then they decided, well, if it's going to grow this big, we really should uh, change the name and invite everybody. So that's what started the China Burma India Veterans Association, and eventually sweat it eventually spread to the whole fifty states. And these fellows would get together and start telling their stories, and one story would lead to another one, and that's what made the China Burma India organization so great that. They were literally like family. In fact, that's what we've been referred to as just a great big family. I may I worked my way up the the ladder to national commander. I was national commander in eighty seven and eighty eight. We had eight thousand members at that time. And we're having our last reunion the last part of uh, August and the first part of September in Crystal City, New Virginia. And this is kind of a, a round out thing for me because several years ago I was going to my first, I was going to one of our 7th Bomb Group reunions in Arlington, Virginia. And there were very few people showed up. In fact, the fellow that was going to run the reunion didn't even appear. 